Hey everybody, this is Fred Ricciani of TSC News, here to present you with some of the best Brock Lesnar sound bites from the UFC 200 media conference call. Brock had a lot to say about growing up on the farm, fighting Mark Hunt, being a wrestler and an MMA fighter, and oh yeah, he even responded to Stephanie McMahon's comments when she said, well, you know, we don't necessarily support Brock Lesnar's fight at UFC 200. Interesting. So sit back, relax, and take a listen because there is only one Brock Lesnar. Thanks very much, guys. Uh, first question is uh, for Brock. Brock, do you think how you look in this fight will have any bearing at all on your drawing power in pro wrestling? I really don't give a shit. Okay. Um, now, when it comes to Mark, do you think that um, when he says he's going to knock your face off, that that's relying too much on on, on a punching chance um, and not accounting enough for the wrestling? Um, <laughs> it's a fight. Anything can happen. So I'm sure Mark's prepared for just about anything, and, and so am I. I mean, that, we're all professional athletes here. Everybody, to, to go in and have a chance, I, I would hope not, you know. We'll hear from David Martin from Fox Sports. Uh, yeah, first question is for Brock. Uh, Brock, I know, you know, obviously this fight was just announced uh, at this point a matter of weeks ago. At what point did you start training again? Like, did you have an idea you were coming back? Like, how long of a training camp have you actually had to, to get ready for this return? Not very long. I didn't know. I wasn't sure if it was even going to happen. So, I mean, I can't even, I don't remember the date. Um, but I've been training, I've been training four or five weeks. And uh, before that, before the, my call to Dana, I wasn't even sure if this thing was going to happen at UFC 200. We had talked and maybe thought we could maybe put something together by uh, November for New York. But, um, you know, I'll, I, I'll fight whenever uh, the money's right. And uh, we uh, we took it to the 11th hour, and, and that's where we're at. So it is what it is. I know you said when the fight first got signed, I know Paul Heyman has commented on this as well, that, you know, right after you decided to retire and re-sign with WWE, almost immediately you had that, that regret a little bit that you wanted to fight again. I mean, now that you have this fire back and you're about to fight in a week from now, I mean, do you feel like this is, this is one and done, or do you feel like you are going to fight more than this? Um, I don't know. You know, I feel really good. Training camp is going great. Uh, I'm happy. I'm happy with my life. I'm happy with everything, you know. And yes, uh, since I did, since I left the octagon after I, I, I got beat by Overeem, uh, you know, and and kind of forced out of the cage uh, because of my illness, uh, it, it was it, it haunted me for a long time. So, well, what do you do? Uh, here I am, and before it's too late, I want to get back in the cage and and uh, have some fun with it. This is all about having fun. I'm not looking past this fight. I'm just taking one day at a time, one training session at a time, and, uh, you know, looking forward to July 9th. Um, I'm grateful uh, that that uh, Mark Hunt uh, took the fight, and, and you know, it, it it was short notice for me and him. So uh, we'll see what happens on, on the 9th. And obviously, Brock, I know you've dealt with, uh, you know, with questions about performance-enhancing drugs your entire career. That's nothing new. You've had to answer those questions. But I'm kind of curious, you know, your reaction to some of the stuff that Mark has said, even if you've seen it, where he said that, you know, he believes you've been juicing your whole life and he had questions about you Sada testing you. I mean, what is your reaction? Is that just kind of more of what you've always heard? <laughs> I've been dealing with that my entire life. I'm a white boy and I'm jacked. Deal with it. <laughs> you know, so what, what do you what do you want me to say? I'm a white boy and I'm Jack. Deal with it. And uh, the last question for you, Brock. I, I know that uh, I know that you know one of the things that that your friend Paul Heyman has said going into this fight was you know you are a rare athlete. You know, not many people, not anybody can really do what you do. 
to fight at UFC 200 and then turn around and promote an event like SummerSlam a month later, and he kind of compared you to Conor and Ronda. Do you do you agree with that statement? Do you believe that you are kind of a you know once in a lifetime kind of uh, kind of performer that could do both things that could fight one day and then go around and sell a, a WWE show the next? Well, I feel really grateful that I can. I'm not. I mean. I'm not comparing myself to anybody. Uh, what Paul Heyman says on my behalf, uh, let me clue you in. Paul Heyman's my agent on fake television. He's not my agent uh, for the UFC. So I, what, I haven't really followed much of anything. I never have. I don't have a Twitter account. I don't have Facebook. Um, it is what it is. I, I you know, it, it, To me, it's all BS. So I just, right now I'm trying to enjoy this. And, uh, you know, make every memory I can. Because the lasting memories I had in the cage were, you know, weren't really fun. Because I was, I, was, I was sick. I had surgery. I'd deal with that. Coming back from that, you know, I was, I was worn out. I was tired. But now I, I, I feel rejuvenated. I feel healthy. I feel grateful for the opportunity. And here we are. We'll hear now from Marissa Payne, the Washington Post. Hi, I have a question, or couple questions, I guess, for, for Brock. Um, so you've said a couple of times, you know, you've alluded to the fact that, you know, this is going to be a big payday for you. But I'm, I mean, obviously you can make money in other ways, too. So I assume that you're coming back as well to either prove something or, um, you know, because you just like competition. I guess, is there something in that regard, too, about competition that you love? Well, absolutely. You know, I've, I've, been, a, I've been an athlete since I was five years old. Love the, I love this sport. You know, I believe that uh, I was meant to be a fighter and an, an entertainer. And ab- absolutely, uh, it's one of those things for me that I want to I want to get back in. Like I said, it's it's no it's no mystery that I that I was forced out of this uh, out of this competition uh, because of an illness I had, and and I tried to I tried to be the competitor that I wanted to be. But it's kind of hard to do when you when you have a disease and and uh, and you fight back from it and and yeah. So I'm I'm in a whole different spot with mentally and physically within my life right now. And before I became a 40 year old man, uh, I you know I want to get back in the cage. I mean, some of these I'm fighting a 42 year old guy. The the guys in the heavyweight division are uh, uh, the average age is 35, 36 years old. You know, so. Uh, it is what it is. I'm a competitor, and I'll be a competitor probably uh, in a nursing home and uh, racing my wheelchair around probably. Uh, honestly, lady, I really don't care. You know, if this isn't about me or my or, or about my fans. This is about me living my life, being the person that I want to be. I mean, granted, without the fans and everything, we, none of us would be able to do this. I get that, but, you know, but I'm not... I don't. I don't sit up at night wondering, Gal, is, is my drawing power going to be hurt, or or is my WWE fans going to tune in and watch me do this? I don't. I don't give two shits about that. I, this is about me. And I want and and I want to get in there and and be, be an athlete again. That's what it's about. We'll move next to Justin Barrasso with Sports Illustrated. Thank you, Brock. Question for Brock Lesnar. Uh, curious in terms of your training. I'm guessing they're different. You know, it's apples to oranges. But any similarities? Obviously, I know the world of pro wrestling is far different than the world of mixed martial arts. But any similarities between your training methods or when you train in the octagon in the cage? Is it a totally different beast uh, than when you train for pro wrestling? Absolutely, it's not even it's not even the same thing, man. It's uh, you know, I I've really never left training you of MMA. Every, any chance I can to to grapple or to do jujitsu or to, to hit mitts or, or whatever, you know, I never really, cause I, I, I have a true passion for the sport. I love the sport. So, I mean, it, it's just, I did it just to, to pass time and to stay in shape, but no, to compare the two, uh, to be in, in wrestling shape, pro wrestling shape versus fighter shape, not even, not even on the same planet. And you've always embraced the challenge. It's so strange to think of Brock Lesnar as an underdog, but you know, Mark Hunt's had nine uh, fights in your five years away from the cage. It, does it just it give you? Does it light your fire? Does it give you a little bit more spark and motivation? The fact that people are doubting you—I mean, that—that's got to fill up your your belly with a little bit of extra fire. 
Oh, I, it, I like any true competitor. I mean, there really isn't. Uh, I haven't given much thought to it at all. I mean, uh, he, the, the longer you know, I'm trying to. I've, I've tried to knock the rust off here in, in the last five weeks. You know, I mean, it, I'm going to show up and be the best guy that I possibly can be uh, on the ninth of July. So, and uh, he's been uh, he's been putting food on the table for the last five years and uh, getting in in the octagon. So, I mean, uh, and I've been I've been doing it in a different way. You know, it, it's just. I think it's, I think uh, we're in for a, a really good fight. You know, I'm sure Mark is preparing himself the best that he can, and and just as just as I am. And Brock, my last question: There's been reports uh, that that arm wrestling match that Vince McMahon, you know, you beat him that allowed you to come back. That was the agreement if you beat him in arm wrestling. We've heard reports that he's claiming it, it took you a while to beat him. Any truth to that? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. It actually took two two arms to beat Vince McMahon. I actually had to beat him with two. Two versus one. Thank you. <laughs> we'll hear next from Dave Debert, Post Media News. Hi, you guys. Thanks for the time. Uh, just a quick one for Brock. You, uh, you've talked uh, a lot about being in a good place, uh, physically and mentally. Um I'm I'm wondering about uh, life life for you on the farm, you know, and specifically uh, in Saskatchewan, where you've uh, where you've set up uh, set up a second home. What what is it about uh, about life there um, that appeals to you and that's treating you uh, apparently uh, pretty well? Well, that's that's my primary residence in Saskatchewan, and it's just I've set that up. To, to raise my family, uh, you know, kind of, I, I love Canada. I love the United States, but I love Canada and the, and the aspects of what it has to offer for hunting and, and fishing. And, and, uh, I just happen to find a place, uh, a place that, uh, I really love and, uh, my, my family loves. And that's, that's what this is all about. I mean, in the end, I mean, you could talk, ask any of the three guys that are on the line here, I'm sure we're all we're all family men. We're no different. Everybody gets up and puts your puts your uh, pants on the same way. And uh, if 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 any man is a stand up guy, uh, they're a family man. And so that's who I am. That's who I am. At the end of the day, this is just a job, and this is what we do. This is how we put food on the, on our on our family's table, and uh, and and we enjoy it. It's kind of funny, but we enjoy getting uh, hitting people, and we enjoy getting hit. And that I feel very fortunate to be able to, to have this job. Um, again, again, going back to a lot of stuff that you've talked about, you growing up on the farm and and the work ethic that that it instilled in you. Uh, I, I gather it's quite important for you to pass that on to uh, to to your family as well. Is that safe to say? <laughs> Oh, 100%. You know, I don't want to raise my kids in the city. I want them to know what a, a good day of honest day's work is. You know, get out and uh, I want them to know what it's like to throw square bales all day. I want them to know what it's like to, to pick rocks all day, get the rocks out of the field. Yeah, my kids, there's no easy way out for my kids. Uh, they're they're going to have to earn their keep because too many kids nowadays, I think, uh, life's just too easy. Life's at the palm of their hands with their phones. Everything's accessible. Not in my house. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you for the time, Brock. We'll move next to Mark Ramondi, SB Nation. And just lastly for Brock, um, everyone's saying that, that Mark is going to be a very tough test for you. He's one of the best knockout artists in the division. How do you feel about Mark? What, what do you think of his game, and, and what do you think of his strengths and weaknesses? Winning. For sure he is. Um... Well, yeah, <laughs> for sure he's a knockout. He's a heavy hitter. Uh, I'm preparing to 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 um, to not take one of those shots. To uh, you know, to try to answer that and and to uh, you know to to win this fight. Some people have said, Ross, that that Mark is kind of a bad matchup for you because he's so good at stand up. He's so good at striking, and and that's been one of your weaknesses in the past. How, how do you respond to those criticisms? Oh man, 
is, is he better than I am at stand up? Of course he is. Is he a better wrestler than me? Hell no. And he'll probably tell you that too. So, I mean, that's why we're fighting. We're going to see, you know, see who the best man is uh, with their, with their discipline, you know, on the ninth, of course. And, and then, and then, just, and then just last thing for you, uh, Brock, and, I, and I'll let you guys go. Um, uh, Stephanie McMahon was quoted on um, this week in an interview saying, uh, that the US that the WWE was not necessarily supporting um this fight and, and you fighting in, in UFC. Uh wh- what does that mean exactly and, and uh what does that mean what does that mean to you? That they're not supporting it? She said um we're not necessarily supporting it. Those those were her words. Um I don't I don't know. I don't care what she says. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Thanks. Thanks very much.